Morning scramble right here in northern Arizona. We are continuing to have Jeff Stein on. He's the president of the Cosanti Foundation and resides at our Cosanti, Paolo Soleri's urban experiment. We also have on with us Samantha Scarlett. She's the daughter of Lisa Scafiro, the documentary filmmaker of the vision of Paolo Soleri, prophet in the desert. Nice to have you on with us, Samantha. Hi, yeah, nice to talk to you too, Sandy. Hi, Samantha. Now, this, uh, this film was, is a featured selection coming up at the Sedona Film Festival this week. Yes, that's right. It's going to be playing on Tuesday night and on Friday morning at the Sedona International Film Festival, and we're really excited about that. Well, that's great. And also, it's just garnered an award of excellence in filmmaking at the Canada International Film Festival. Yep, that's correct. And it's also going to be um, playing in Washington, D.C., in March at the Environmental Film Festival. Um, it's going to be screening at the National Building Museum, so that's going to be pretty exciting. And I think it's also going to be in some other film festivals along the East Coast and possibly Europe in the next coming months. So it's on the road. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the award. That's fabulous. Thank you. Um, yeah, we were very excited to hear about the award. It, because amazing. that just came in this week, didn't it? Yeah, it was just nice. We found out. Now, why did Lisa decide to make this film, Samantha? Um, well, Lisa had always been a um, big uh, supporter of Paolo's work. She always thought that his work was extremely important as far as sustaining our environment and not creating urban sprawl. Um, she had originally uh, approached some well-known documentary filmmakers in the 90s. Um, I think she approached Ken Burns to do a documentary on Larry. But um, they were all, like, booked up, like, for literally, like, a decade in advance. And... Um, they said to her, you should do one on him. You're so passionate about this. You know him. You know everything on the subject. Who would be better to do a documentary on Valeri than you? So she had never done a film before. She had been an architect for, like I think, 10 years in, prior to having me. And then um, she did, uh, I guess she worked after that, too, in architecture. But um, she had never done a film before. And... So she, I think, started the project around 2002 or 2003, and she started collecting footage and putting together a storyline, and it took about almost 10 years to complete, but it's definitely, like, a huge accomplishment, and I think it's a really interesting film, and I'm, I'm not really, like, into the whole architecture thing necessarily, but I think whether you're into architecture or environmentalism, or just want to hear an interesting story about a really extraordinary human being, this film is a really good film. Did she meet Paolo in connection with the architecture that she did? Um, I believe that the first time she ever met Solari was when she was in college. He did a lecture at her college architecture class, and that's when she first heard about him and was deeply like impacted by what he talked about, and I think it really influenced her with her architecture. Um, and then when we moved here from the East Coast in the mid-90s, she went to his uh, studio, Cosanti, and happened to bump into him, and they started talking. And from then on, they became very, very close friends, and they were very close friends until his death. I think we were one of the last people to actually go see him when he was dying last year. Um, we saw him about a week before he died, and he was, at the time, he was going in and out of, like, being, like, basically in a coma, so I mean, we were very close with him. Well, now this film was primarily made in Arizona, Samantha. Yes, um, the primary filming was here in Arizona at Cosanti and Arco Santi and in Paradise Valley. There was also filming in New York City, Washington, D.C., California, and Italy. Um, so it was filmed all over the place, but the majority of it was here in the state of Arizona. Well, you have some special music as well on this from the well-known Jared Leto, who just got a Golden Globe for his performance in a film. Uh, yeah, I did the um, sound selection for the movie. Um, I picked out the music, and when I heard uh, Alibi by 30 Things Smart, um, Lisa, or my mom, she had wanted to use a... Um, contemporary, possibly rock song that had kind of like a classical undertone to it for the film. And I heard this 30 Seconds to Mars song, and I was like, oh my gosh, this song is the perfect song, and I played it for her. And she was, she like fell in love with it, and so we approached Jared Leto and 30 Seconds to Mars about licensing the song to film. And as it turns out, when it was granted, 
um, the uh, licensing agent told us that we were the first, I think to date we're still the first and only independent film to ever receive licensing from 30 Seconds to Mars and Jared Leto, so that was pretty exciting. Um, some of the other music in the film is we use CKY, who, if you're familiar with them, they, their music's usually used in a jackass movies, but um, we use an acoustic song of theirs, which is really beautiful, and Chad, the guitarist of the band who also uses their music, um, he gave us a special version of it that didn't have the audio on it, so in the film you hear, hear it, the special acoustic version without audio, and then I think in the um, credits it has the regular version of the song. And then we have music from Justin Salter, which is the main score of the film. Justin Salter is an Arizona native who used to be the drummer for the band Scary Kids, Scaring Kids, and he's now working as a producer and film score composer out in L.A. And his music is brilliant and really beautiful, and it just, like, builds up and it's powerful. And so, yeah, we have we like the music. Oh, and then there's obviously the biggest name in the film, really, honestly, probably isn't Jared Leto, um, music-wise. It's, we've got a song by Andre Bocelli, the uh, Italian opera singer, and it's really beautiful. So, um, yeah, we have some interesting music in the film. Well, also I noticed that the grandson of Frank Lloyd Wright was in the film, Eric Lloyd Wright, and as, as Jeff and I were talking, he had, uh, Paolo had studied with Frank Lloyd Wright. Yes, um, Eric Lloyd Wright, who is, he's younger than Paolo, but he was there when Paolo was um, studying with Frank Lloyd Wright, so uh, we interviewed him. I wasn't there for that, but from what I've heard, the drive up to his home in Malibu is very scary, but has a beautiful view. But he, he was a wealth of information because he had a real, like, interesting insight to Flurry because he's one of the few people that's still alive that was part of Taliesin during that time period. So it was really amazing to have him in the film speaking and giving an insight that really nobody else could give because he's a member of Wright family, so it was the next best thing we could have to having Frank Lloyd Wright actually in the film to have his grandson. So that was a big honor that he granted it. Absolutely. Um, what will people come away with from this film, The Vision of Paolo Soleri, Samantha? Um, well, we hope that people come away from this film with a better understanding of our colleges and the need to build up rather than out and to conserve the environment and not create the urban sprawl that is destroying the planet. Um, you know, Solidarity's work might not be the most practical thing to be used right now, but like what Lisa's feeling and a lot of people who are supporters of Solari feel is that like, you know, a couple hundred years from now, even like a hundred years from now, that people will look back and think, you know, his work set the foundation for what went on to like help save the environment because right now you know our planet's in crisis with global warming and there's just too many highways and everything's spread out but it's not spread out like you know farmland it's lost you go to los angeles and it's just miles and miles and miles and hundreds of thousands of acres of highways and buildings and concrete we need to to save sure. the environment sure. and have everything limited to a smaller space. That's great. Samantha Scarlett, thank you so much for joining us. The film Vision of Paolo Soleri out now. Um, don't go away. We're going to take a break, and we will be right back with some final thoughts.